So this is Sennheiser's new flagship IEM, the IE900. This is replacing their old flagship, the IE800S. Today, we're gonna to be talking about it. First, some disclosures. Sennheiser did send this out for review. I'm not being paid, asked, or otherwise influenced to say anything good or bad about this IEM. All thoughts and opinions, like always, are my own. So this thing is pretty wonderful, as you can imagine. Sennheiser is a company that I'm typically a very big fan of most of their headphones. The majority of their audiophile class of, of headphones, I am a huge fan of. I also really liked their previous headphone that they released for IEMs, which is gonna be the IE300. This headphone got a really big recommendation from me. But I think what's most interesting about this setup is the line progression. And I think this kind of starts to introduce a, a topic for discussion about what a lower end product and a higher end product for the same company should sound like because what the IE900 sounds like is the absolute monster, detailed, crazy clean, crazy version of the IE300. It seems like that, but much, much better, but still in the same vein of like type of sound signature. So the question becomes, is it a good idea for companies to basically keep making their sound signature more extreme and just a little bit better and a little bit better the higher and higher and up you go in the line? Or should this be something where you have a different sound signature for the flagship? And I really ask this because in Sennheiser's own brand, they have a lot of diversity in this kind of discussion because they have the IE300 and the IE900, which sound very similar in terms of the general sound signature, but it's all the details and specifics that matters. But then you go to their headphone lineup and you have the HD 600 class, like the 660S, which is a wonderful headphone. But then their flagships, the 800S and the 820 are very different. They're like polar opposite of what the HD 660S is good at. So it's interesting how they have this extreme diversity on one side of their headphones, but this extreme similarity on the other side of their headphones. And I'm wondering what you guys would prefer to see from a brand. And this also begs the question for me, are they gonna come out with a new headphone flagship? Because if they are, I hope I can review it because uh, that one I would be very excited for. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started in this review. The unboxing is what I would consider to be fairly typical. Uh, it comes with a hard case, it comes with your sets of ear tips, it comes with a cleaning device, uh, your manual of course, and it comes with three cables. Now the cables are a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced and a 2.5 and 4.4 millimeter balanced cable. They're all the same length and of the same kind of cable type. The cable is actually great. You can like fold this up, throw it in your pocket, roll it up, doesn't matter. It'll basically come out straight every time uh, without kinks or anything. It's a really nice cable. Now I do wish that the 4.4, because that's a more popular option, especially kind of nowadays with a lot of the, the desktop amplifiers, I, I kind of wish this cable was a little bit longer just for the desktop users and then they'd have the 2.5 or 3.5 for mobile use, but that's not the case. Now, quick note on the machine, I won't make this last too long, but Sennheiser did send out uh, these little chassis cutouts uh, without drivers in them also. And uh, I figured I'd take some macro footage of this thing because the inside of this is actually extremely well made. I've seen a lot of internals for IEMs. This is one of the, the cleanest, most well-refined setups that I've actually seen the inside of. So from a machining perspective, good job Sennheiser. Now the comfort here is class leading. In fact, the, the chassis dimensions are exactly the same as the IE300, which I actually think is the most comfortable I am that I've ever tried. I actually still think I slightly prefer the IE300 for comfort just because of the material that's used. It, it's not cold to the touch like the, the metal is on the IE900. It also doesn't have the machining lines that the IE900 has. So it's a little bit smoother if you're like really pressing it against your ear. It's a small difference, maybe like 2%, uh, but if there was gonna be a king of comfort, it would still be the IE300. This is real close behind though. Okay, sound quality. I think that this thing is going to check a lot of people's boxes. Let's go over some of the main features. Bass response. Like, it's got super bass, right? Super, super bass. It's really, really strong for this feature. It's a very good bass headphone. But then it's also got really wide sound staging with like impeccable instrument placement and just really well-defined imaging. But then it's got probably the key feature for me and why I think I like this so much, which is going to be Sennheiser tonality. 
Same thing with their IE300. I don't know how they're doing it, but they have a tonality that is unlike any other IEM on the market today and it's wonderful. Now, this is a very enjoyable IEM. That's kind of the goal. This is like the sit back, really envelop yourself into the music, really envelop yourself into a movie. That's what this IEM is gonna be for. I would not consider this to be a hyper-technical IEM. It's not gonna be for the people analyzing music from like a mastering perspective. It's just gonna be people simply sitting back and enjoying their music in a fun and engaging way. That's what this IEM is for, and that's who this IEM is for. Now, first thing to talk about for sound quality, I think is a trouble response because it's very detailed, but it's also a little bit understated in some areas. It's, it's always present, uh, but it's also not really drawing any attention to itself. I think it's actually a little bit dark, even like above like 10K, I think it's a little bit dark there, and it's not really kind of popping through to provide a lot of ambience auditorily. So the sense of ambience is there. And this is the weird thing about the sound staging because if you look at their full size headphones like the HD 800S, the sound staging on that headphone is incredible, but you hear all the upper frequencies. Like you, you physically are aware of their existence and they're adding to the presentation of the staging. It's a little bit different here. It's got wide sound staging for an IM, really wide but you're not really picking up on all those upper frequencies. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I guess this just depends on the user, right? Like every user is gonna be a little bit different on how they prefer to hear the trouble response here. And I think for some users, this is gonna be like real good. And then for others, they might wish for a little bit more presence up in those upper regions. So I guess this would just depend on who you are and what you prefer. I'd prefer this over an overactive trouble personally. So to talk about mid-range, I have to let you know that this is a V-shaped headphone. So because it's a V-shaped headphone, where does that V kind of kick in and what does it do to the mid-range? And this has a unique way of dealing with its own V-shape in a pretty fun and engaging way. Let me explain. So normally with a V-shaped headphone, you get a lot of bass, uh, trouble spots that are kind of, you know, picking up here and there, uh, but then you get kind of this far out vocalist. Now the vocalist isn't very forward. They're, they're not very like, you know, in your face, super present, but the positioning is like dead center in the center of your brain. And you get this kind of surrounding effect of all the imaging stuff, all the instrument stuff and all the bass stuff kind of surrounding that globe of a person's voice. It's actually a really like, it's a strange take. I, I haven't really heard too many other IEMs that sound like this, but it's a very like surrounding delivery. So even though the voice isn't forward in terms of, of presentation, the positioning I feel like is excellent. I'm not sure how they're achieving this because it, it doesn't really sound like most other IEMs here. Now, when it comes to the upper registries of a voice, that's where the V shape kind of comes back a little bit. So some of the S's, some of the T's, they're not overkill, but they are definitely more present than some of the other trouble regions. So your voices are really gonna cut through in a really busy mix, especially on the top end. Now on the lower mid range, this is a little interesting to me because uh, tonally, it's incredibly dense. Like it's very, very dense. You feel like you're really listening to like a person's voice down there and it sounds rich and inviting and you can hear all the texture, but you don't get this kind of um, boomy flooding nature from the mid range like you can with some other IEMs. That was even something that the IE 300 kind of suffered with was it, it seemed a little bit um, it, thick in there. This seems dense, it seems kind of really well flavored, but it's not syrupy in that, that area. Um, this is actually really clean, lower mid-range performance, and it's actually really good. Okay, and then you have the bass. This outshines every other aspect of this headphone. Every other aspect is very good. It's very good. It's a, you know, it's a very well-performing IM, but bass is what this thing is good at. Bass is why you should buy this thing if you're, you're into the bass that it has, which is, Great. So to kind of explain how good the bass is, I want to kind of draw some, some comparisons here. I want to talk about two extremely expensive IEMs that are like flagships of their companies. They're very, very good at what they do and they're good at just about everything. That's going to be the Empire Ears Odin and the Fur M5s. Now these both are almost three times uh, more expensive than that IEM. The bass on the IE900 blows these things out of the water. Easy. It's for a couple of reasons. One, it is incredibly strong. Like it's, it's really strong. It's got a lot of bass to it, but it's paired with a couple features that are really stand out. One, 
it's very clean. It's the type of bass response that, you, you know, if you heard it on like a, on a cheap subwoofer, it'd just be annoying. Like it's just it, not good. But if you went and listened to like, you know, a, a $20,000 speaker or like a $10,000 subwoofer, you'd be like, oh, okay. It's strong, it's real strong, but there's a cleanliness and a clarity to it. But it's also got something very interesting, which plays into the soundstage. On this IM, I think it's the bass response that is singularly responsible for the scale that this headphone has in terms of size. Because when the bass hits, things just feel enormous. They feel huge. So to give you some context of how strong the bass response is on this headphone, it is stronger and cleaner and clearer than every headphone that they make. Every full-size headphone, this has better bass response than those do. Okay, so here's a couple of Stando albums and songs that I recommend listening to the bass response on this headphone on. The Interstellar soundtrack, so good. I love that soundtrack, but this, like, you need, you need wide sound staging, you need treble detail, and you need a lot of bass for this soundtrack to sound its best, and this delivers on that 100%. You also have the song Only by Zoo, which is Z-H-U, and that has some super enjoyable bass rhythms. Then you have Runaway by Aurora, Overture from Daft Punk, and Ungodly Hour from Chloe and Haley. And all those tracks sound quality, man. They are so good on this IM. It's really impressive, actually. I like those songs a lot. Okay, so conclusion time. I think Sennheiser is, they're obviously very excited, right? This is a, a, a new flagship for them. Uh, they told me specifically that they were kind of wanting this to be a new reference point. I, I think it might be a reference point for like one thing, which would be bass response or maybe like comfort if you want to add that as sort of a side category. But I, I think in some areas, the technicality does fall a little bit behind, like the mid-range forwardness could be better, the treble forwardness could be better, um, and the top end of vocals could be smoothed out a little bit. So it does have some room for improvement, like every other product in the planet does. Even though I'm saying that though, if this is your type of sound signature, this thing is great. It's it's great. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks a lot, Sennheiser, for sending this out. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off. Peace.